This program presents various aspects of Fall River history using postcards to illustrate the talk. The postcards are from the Fall River Historical Society collection. Postcards were popular from the late 19th until the mid 20th century. Just about every city or town produced postcards to show natural or cultural features of the area. Personal cameras were rare, and those that used them were mostly restricted to black and white photos until the post-World War II era. Postcards could be purchased for a relatively low price, and they were in color. They would serve as a reminder of the places that one visited or to show family and friends where they had been. This 1907 postcard is of an electric bus and is a good introduction to the program. Why not hop aboard and take a trip around town to see some of the sights? The Rolling Rock is a glacial feature and was a gift of the last glacial advance and retreat of the Great Glacier. Geologists call this a glacial erratic since the boulder is made of a different type of rock than the base it sits on. In this case, the rock is a sedimentary stone called a conglomerate and it sits on Farva granite which makes up all of the Farva area. The boulder itself weighs some 140 tons and was left at this spot some 10,000 or so years ago by the retreating ice. King Philip Spring is one of several springs that feeds water into the North Watupa Pond. The spring is located on water department land. It is believed that at one point of the King Philip War, Philip and his entourage stopped here to rest and to get away from the pursuing colonial forces. The Watupa Ponds were created by the advance and retreat of the Great Continental Glacier. The advancing ice cut the depression into the landscape and the melting ice filled the depressions to create the pond. The ponds were once connected but are now two separate ponds, the North Watupa for drinking water and the South Watupa for recreation. The pumping station in Fall River. As Fall River grew, the citizens realized that they needed a reliable source of water. Pipes were laid and this pumping station pumped its first water in 1873. The water was pumped to two standpipes at the top of a hill on Bedford Street and gravity caused the water to flow downhill to the homes and businesses below. The building to the left of the pumping station is the coal house where coal was stored to fuel the boilers. The first cotton mill in Fall River opened in 1811. It was built on a small pond in the Globe section of the city. It was a yarn mill. Raw cotton was given to the employees who picked the seeds from the cotton. The clean cotton went to the mill to be spun into yarn and the yarn was returned to the employees who turned it into cloth. The mill was built by Colonel Joseph Durfee and was not successful. After the Civil War, Fall River experienced a building boom in mills. The granite mill on the left was built in 1866 and burned in 1874 with the loss of many lives. Because of this fire, many new regulations were instituted to protect the lives of workers in the mills. The Fall River Iron Works was one of the few businesses in the city that wasn't tied to the manufacture of cloth. It produced nails and barrel hoops. The barrel hoops were used to make ba barrels for the whaling industry. The American Print Works. This company took over the Fall River Iron Works and it became the largest textile print works in the world. They would take raw cotton, turn it into thread, the thread into cloth, and then the cloth would have patterns printed onto it. At its peak, it employed well over 3,500 people. The Picasset Mill was constructed after the Civil War. It stood just west of Main Street. In 1928, it was in the process of being torn down. The weather was cold and the story was that some of those men working in the mills lit a fire in a barrel. The floors of the mills in those days were saturated with oil and once they caught fire it was impossible to put the fire out. The mill burned to the ground in 1928 taking with it a good portion of the downtown business area. Mills on the river. The first mills in the city were built on the Quickwashan River, which flowed over a series of waterfalls, providing energy to turn the water wheels. The coalless engine was invented in Providence in 1848 and removed the need to have falling water provide the power for the mills. The engine would do that. All the mills needed was a source of water to produce steam, so they could be built anywhere on the pond. Once the city water came in in the 1870s, then you could build a mill just about anywhere. Here we see workers in the mill. The two men in the front are supervisors or overseers. The mills liked to employ women and children as they could pay them less and they were less likely to strike. This 1906 Christmas card shows four uh, cultural features of the city of Fall River. St. Mary's Cathedral, 
the Rolling Rock, City Hall, and the Waterworks. Borden Flats Lighthouse. The lighthouse was built around 1880 and was built to warn mariners of the shoals which exist around it. It was manned until the late 1930s when it was automated. It is now privately owned and can be rented for overnight stays. The Coast Guard maintains the light and the fog signal is now located on the nearby Braga Bridge. The Fall River Harbor by night. Uh, this is an artificially produced card to uh, give the feeling of a nighttime scene. Note the Four River Line steamer at the pier. Here we have a shot of the Four River Harbor in 1906 taken from the Somerset side of the river. Another shot of Four River Harbor. Note the Hathaway Street power plant with a coal ship at the pier. This is the Four River Line and Priscilla. The Four River Line connected Boston, Fall River, and Newport to New York City and was started in 1847. The Priscilla went into service in 1894 and was the largest sidewheel steamer in the world at the time. It could carry 1,500 passengers and had a crew of 200. The Steamer Commonwealth. This would be the last and biggest steamer built for the Four River Line. It was built in 1908 at a cost of $2 million and would claim the title of the largest sidewheel steamer in the world. It could carry 2,000 passengers. The Four River Line folded in 1937 as business dropped and a looming strike caused the air owners to throw in the towel. The boats were towed to Baltimore and cut up for scrap metal. Here we have a shot of the Commonwealth at the pier. Notice the windows on the top deck. This was where the dining room was. Until the Commonwealth was built, all the other steamers had their dining rooms on the main deck. The boats were very elaborate. This shot is of the Grand Saloon on the Priscilla. This shot is of the Venetian Gothic Saloon on the Commonwealth. The dining room on the Commonwealth. At its peak, the dining rooms on the various steamers would feature gourmet food at gourmet prices. As business fell, the dining rooms became more affordable. This photo was taken at the peak of the ship's popularity. And you'll notice the waiters are all dressed in tuxes. The Fall River train station was built in 1891. It had a separate waiting room for men and women. It was torn down in 1953. It was on North Main Street, very close to the bottom of President Avenue. Here we see the platform of the train station, with one rail going south and one rail going north. Service ran from Boston through Fall River to Newport. The Roundhouse on Ferry Street. The engines were stored here and a turntable was available to turn the engines around. This postcard shows another artificial nighttime shot of the train station on North Main Street with the McKinley Hotel on the right side of the picture. The first city hall that built downtown was built in 1845 after the Great Fire of 1843. It had markets, banks, offices, and a library. It was remodeled in 1872 and 1873, and it burned in 1886. This card shows the City Hall with the 1872-73 revisions. It was demolished in the 60s to make way for the present City Hall and Route 195. This is the old post office and custom house. It stood approximately where the new post office stands today in the downtown area. The building was erected in the latter 1880s. It was replaced during the depression by the present post office. Here is we see a photo of the armory. Every city had a national guard unit and an armory to house it. This building was built in 1897 and still stands. It was used in recent years by CD Rec. It is in need of costly repairs. The old granite block. This building housed businesses on the first floor and offices on the upper floors. It was built after the 1843 fire. Another shot of the old granite block. It burned in the Bacasset Mill fire of 1928. A new similar granite block was erected after the fire and was later torn down to make way for Route 195, which bisected the city. The Cogswell Fountain. Mr. Cogswell was a teetotaler who donated a number of these drinking fountains to cities across the United States. The idea was that if someone needed a drink, water was best. It originally had an elaborate system, including a provision to dispense ice water. There was a small basin at the base of the fountain so that dogs could also get a drink. The Central Police Station. This building was located at the corner of Granite and Purchase Streets. The police shared the building with the Public Works Department. This is where Lizzie Borden was taken when she was arrested. She was later transferred to the Taunton Jail. 
The Night Watch was established in Fall River in 1835 and the Police Department established in 1844. City Hall and the Picasset Firehouse. There were several of these two bay fire barns scattered around the city since horses were used to pull the fire apparatus to the fire. The Slades Ferry Bridge. This bridge was built in 1875 and replaced a ferry that had existed on the spot since Indian times. There were also railroad tracks that went over the top part of the bridge and trains would go from Fall River to Providence via that route. The Brightman Street Bridge. This bridge was completed in 1908 and was taken out of service when the new Veterans Memorial Bridge was built. Another shot of the Brightman Street Bridge. Notice the small beach on the Somerset side of the bridge. Hose Company Number 8. This was another small fire barn located on South Main Street. It was located where the modern furniture was in later times, and you can still see the arches of the bays. The Quickwishan Firehouse, another of the many fire bonds that dot the city. They date back to the days of horse-drawn fire apparatus. This building presently houses the Little Theater. At the end of the 19th century, many French-Canadian families were recruited by the mill, local mills to come to Fall River and work. The French-Canadian families donated funds to erect this magnificent church. It was started in the 1890s and finished in 1906. The Notre Dame Church. This was another church built to serve the many French-Canadian families that came to work in the city. It was by far the most magnificent of all the city's churches. It was completed in 1906. It burned to the ground in 1982. St. Mary's Cathedral. In the 1830s, there were only two dozen Catholics in Fall River. By mid-century, their numbers grew as immigrants came from Catholic countries to work in the mills. By the late 1800s, Catholicism was the dominant religion in the city. The Fall River Diocese was established and St. Mary's Cathedral was built in 1855. The first Congregational Church was built on North Main Street in 1832 and many of Fall River's prominent citizens were members of this church. A new Congregational Church would be built on Rock Street to replace this church. The Central Congregational Church was founded in 1842 by a breakaway group from the first Congregational Church. The church was dedicated in 1875 and was the home church of Andrew Borden and his family. The Quaker Church also known as the Friends Meeting House, was located on North Main Street where the YMCA stands today. Quakers made up the largest religious group in Freetown. The church was built in 1836 and torn down in 1942. The Davis Grammar School, this was one of several schools in the city that served grades six through eight students. For many students in the early 20th century, these schools were the end of the line for formal education. Jeffy High School. This school was a gift to the city from Mrs. Mary Young in memory of her son BMC Jeffy who died at the age of 29. It is said that this magnificent building was designed after the City Hall of Paris. It was started in 1883 and completed in 1886. It remained a high school until a new Jeffy was built in the mid-1960s. The cost of building the school was over $1 million, a sizable sum in the 1880s. The Jeffy High School Cadet Corps. Many of the working class families in the cities would take their children out of school after the eighth grade. The high school had a large number of wealthy class students. A large number were in the cadet corps and, of not, and enough of them had their own horses so they actually had a cavalry unit. The Gun Mansion. This house was built by John Borden in the 1820s. It is said to be the largest mansion ever built in the city. It had 55 rooms. Borden controlled much of the land on either side of the Quickwashan River and was active in the textile industry. In later years, the mansion would serve as a hotel called the Exchange Hotel and then return to a mansion as the Gun House. The house would fall into disrepair and was demolished in 1910. The Mohegan Hotel, the largest hotel in the city, was the Mohegan Hotel and it was located on North Main Street. It burned in the 1928 Picasset Mill fire. Here we have an interior shot of the Mohegan Hotel. The Hotel Mellon. This hotel was also located on North Main Street, diagonally across from the Mohegan Hotel. It was used as a temporary city hall while the city was building the present city hall. The Falcon Room of the Mellon Hotel. Dr. Clark's Private Sanitarium. Fall River had a number of hospitals and this one was a private one that was once a residence. The Truesdale Hospital 
was on Highland Avenue and was started by Dr. Philemon Truesdale. In 1926-27, the hospital was renovated with funds given by Earl Charlton. It was closed and combined with the Union Hospital in 1980, taking on the name of its benefactor, Earl Charlton. St. Anne's Hospital was a Catholic hospital that was once part of the St. Anne's Complex, which included a church, rectory, priory, schools, and a hospital. The hospital now is part of the Stewart Hospital chain. The City Hospital in Fall River. This hospital was located on Robeson Street and operated until the 1960s when it was closed. Here we have a shot of the original Union Hospital. A shot of the Union Hospital. In 1900, the Union and Emergency Hospitals were combined. In 1980, the Union and Truesdale Hospitals were combined and the name changed to the Charlton Hospital. E.P. Charlton. Earl Charlton started a five and 10 cent store in the city, eventually turning into a chain of, of stores and eventually combining it with F.W. Woolworths, which became a nationwide chain of five and 10 cent stores. Charlton never forgot his hometown and donated heavily to several endeavors. A shot of North Main Street looking north. South Main Street. Note the Academy building on the corner of Pleasant Street. This building was erected in 1875 and housed a number of businesses on the ground level and offices above. It also housed the Academy Theater. South Main Street looking north. Notice McQueer's department store on the left. This was Fall River's most famous store. North Main Street looking north. North Main Street looking south. Notice the Savoy Theater on the right hand side of the street. This was just one of a number of theaters that graced the city in the early 20th century. Main Street in the mid 20th century. Note the traffic box in the center of the road. Another shot of mid 20th century Main Street. Still another shot of Main Street. Note Paul Waltman's men's store, a longtime fixture in the downtown area. The Seth Borden House. This house now serves as the rectory for the Holy Name Church. The Sarah Brayton House on Highland Avenue. The Oak Grove Cemetery. In 1855, the city purchased 47 acres of land in the northeastern part of the city for a burial ground and became the main cemetery for the city, replacing the north burial ground. Another shot of the Oak Grove Cemetery. There were several boathouses on, located on the South Watupper Pond where one could rent a boat. The pond at South Park. South Park was one of three parks in Fall River designed by the famous firm of Olmsted, who was the designer of Central Park in New York City. Another shot of Lower South Park. The shelter at South Park. This building sat at the top of the hill so that citizens could enjoy the cool breezes off the bay in the summertime. South Park's name was changed to Kennedy Park in honor of our late president. Carriage Drive in South Park. The ponds in the parks were very active during the summer as residents sailed their toy boats or simply waded in the water to cool off. The wading pool at North Park. This was another of the Olmsted Parks. Here we have a shot of the lily pond at North Park. This shot shows Lower North Park with the fire barn in the background. The North Park Horse Show. The city gentry held a horse show for several summers in North Park. Ruggles Park. This was the third Olmsted designed park in the city. Unlike the other two Olmsted parks, this one did not have a wading pond, perhaps because it was smaller. During the winter, the fire department would flood the baseball field to make a skating rink. Lafayette Park. This park was in the east end of the city in what was once a predominantly French-speaking area. The statue of Lafayette graces the northwest corner of the park. Since this photo was taken, the statue of Lafayette has been turned to face the street rather than into the park. Lincoln Park. This was one of several trolley parks, so-called because the trolley companies built these parks to encourage people to ride the trolleys on the weekends. The park stood midway between the cities of Fall River and New Bedford. Lincoln Park was originally just a picnic grove. A carousel was added and eventually other rides would be added to make it a full-fledged amusement park. Lanigan's Beach. 
was one of two small beaches in the north end of town that could be accessed by trolley and later by bus. Bliffins Beach was also located in the north end of the city, very close to Lanigan's Beach. Sandy Beach, located in the far southern end of the city. It could be accessed by trolley and later buses. It had a roller coaster as well as several other rides. It was owned by the Dubois family and was built in 1892. A fire burned the park in 1930 and the hurricane of 1938 destroyed the park totally. A shot here of the Sandy Beach roller coaster. Dighton Rock Park was another of the so-called trolley parks. The Savoy Theater. This was one of several legitimate theaters in the city. It would later become the Bijou Theater. Interlochen. This magnificent house belonged to Spencer Borden and was located on a peninsula in North Watuffa Pond. To protect the water supply, the city took the house and demolished it in the early part of the 20th century. Today, one can still see the remains of this magnificent house. This concludes a slideshow of Fall River history using postcards. If nothing else, one can always find romance in the city.